This is a really important uh, discovery. It's called harmonic 3456 or 3456. And it's a very, very special frequency because somehow it's got an amazing rare connection to the syllables in the Hare Krishna mantra. So that's why I have a beautiful picture of Murali or Krishna. When Krishna's playing the flute, he had a special name called Murali. And this one I'm really excited about because this number 3456 has never been discussed in relationship to Hare Krishna. So, but it has many, many scientific applications. So we know that in ancient Hindu times, we, um, we had 108 beads in the um, Maha Mantra. And when people recited goddesses, prayers, they always chanted 108. So the, the rosary beads were very important. Now, what's important is remember the number 108, but look at the Hare Krishna Mantra here. If you go Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. When I recited this paragraph or stanza, it consisted of 32 syllables. So this is where the discovery is, is that if we multiply 32 by the 108 beads, because that's how many times you're going to recite the Maha or Great Mantra, 32 times 108 happens to be 3,456. So that's the insight that I received. I did this in 2011 when a friend of mine from New York came and stayed for six months and he gave me some, some beautiful beads. And I did my first 108 rounds of 32 syllables. And when I calculated, because I, I calculate everything, I thought, oh, there's three, four, five, six. So that's why it's called harmonic three, four, five, six. Now, where does this number appear? I have about six amazing references to 3456. So first of all, we know that 3456 is consecutive. That means it goes in order like 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9. And here we have 3456. So that's consecutive, numerical order. Two, when you add the digits, 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 equals a 9, which is fantastic. And we also know that 3456 is 108 times 32, two, 32 being a power of 2. So the third point, this is where it gets exciting, is that if we start with the number 27, which is 3 cubed, or 9 plus 9 plus 9, if we keep doing a binary or doubling 27, so 27 becomes 54, double that is 108. So 108 comes up in this discussion. Double 108 is 216, which happens to be 6 cubed. Double that is 432, double that is 864, double that is 1728, which is 12 cubed. Notice we've got 3 cubed, 6 cubed, 12 cubed. Now double 12 cubed is 3456. That really is special. That really amazes me. Um, so this has got a connection to the number 108. And w w why I'm interested in the cubic numbers, because... Um, if this was the uh, Rubik's cube, you know that the cube is three by three has 27 little subcells. So Rubik's cube, which was the greatest toy ever manufactured in our lifetime, is part of this three, four, five, six mystery. And here's a normal one. This is just eight cells, which is two cubed. It's called the infinity cube. This is the most popular toy in the world right now where two cubed can turn itself inside out. And it's like a rosary bead where people fidget. It's like those fidget spinners where people just turn this around, but it's based on cubic uh, consciousness. So it's interesting that the binary on 27 becomes three cubed, six cubed, 12 cubed. And you could plan what's, if you keep doubling three, four, five, six, what would be the next cube? Is it three, six cube, six cube, 12? What's the next cubic number? I'll let you guess that. So now look at the number 108. We know that 108 is times 32 is 3, 4, 5, 6. But look at these exponents. 1 to the power of 1 times 2 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 3 equals 108. I love that because 108 is the key to all harmonics in the universe. Now, here's another reference to um, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we know that the Pythagorean triangle from ancient times is that three squared plus four squared equals five squared. So that's nine cells plus 16 cells, add them up, they, they stack to make 25. But what is the square area of that triangle? So if this was a rectangle, three, four, five triangle, you know that it's three by four is 12. 
So that would make the rectangle, but the area of this triangle must be half that rectangle, which is six. So the three, four, five triangle is three, four, five with an area of six. So I believe that that is connected to harmonic three, four, five, six. Okay, here's a fifth reference to um, three, four, five, six. And this one's a favorite one. This is called um, number theory. Let's add up the cubes. I was talking about the cubes before, but think of this two cubed as there's three cubed. We know that adds up to 27. And here's four cubed. We know that four cubed is 64. And if we had another Rubik's cube, but done as a five by five by five, we know that five cubed is 125. What would happen if you added up three cubed plus four cubed plus five cubed, the sum of all these individual little cells adds up to 216, which happens to form six cubed. So this is really special. You've got three cubed plus four cubed plus five cubed equals six cubed. So there's this amazing uh, reference to three, four, five, six again. Okay, then, and the final reference, this will take two slides to explain, is this is the main reference to harmonic three, four, five, six. There was this amazing guy called Ray Tomes, and this was validated by Dan Winter, but Ray Tomes found a very harmonic ratio, three, Four, five, six, zero, thirty-four thousand five hundred and sixty. That miraculous, miraculously seems to be the ratio that, by scale, connects everything in the universe from the quantum realm to the universe at large. That is, it is the common factor that connects the various worlds or dimensions. For instance, if we were to take the average distance between the moons and multiply it by 34,560, we get the average distance between the planets. Then if you multiply this distance from the planets, you end up with the distance to the stars. So this 34560 harmonic, the scale ratio, connects objects from the small to the large, from nucleons, atoms, cells, moons, planets, stars, galaxies, and even universes. Now, just to confirm this, um, my friend Dan Winter, who lives in the south, south of France, he took Ray Tome's work a bit more, and he, he, he thought he went the other way. Instead, instead of going into the macro, he went into the micro. He said, if we compress the speed of light by a factor of 34,560, we get the speed of sound. And if we compress the speed of sound again by 34,560, we get the speed of heat. And it goes on and on from the macro to the micro. So this was really important work. And this is a special picture by my friend, uh, a friend, a colleague in America called Joe Dubs. And he showed that what the distance says can also be done in terms of 108 moons and 108 diameters of the earth equals the sun's diameter. So it goes on and on and on. And just um, to show you a few more slides, uh, we, we know that um, 27, the beginning of this binary code, um, 2754 um, we know that the fundamentals of it is nine plus nine plus nine. And what I'm saying that everything I study keeps going back to the number nine, the significance, because it seems to be the harmonic that underpins all of creation. So just a few more notes on the number 27 um, was very sacred to Pythagoras. And when I say Pythagoras, I want to show you here that when we look at the tetrahedron and we, we connect the midpoint, the face center of the four sides of the tetrahedron, we create a small tetrahedron inside that's upside down. It happens that there's 27 little tetrahedrons fit inside the original mother form. So there's something about it, the beginning of all creation, the tetrahedron being the fundamental form, has a jewel of itself called self-similar that fits inside itself 27 times. So another thing here is that the number 27 is important because um, Bruce Cathy, a mentor who gave us the ley lines, he's saying that the if we have a, a, a square that's 8 by 8 like the chessboard, 24 hours is related also to 27 hours, which is the nine cube, um, the, the nine cubits. So we have eight cubits and nine cubits that mystically square the circle. And there's a harmonic relationship between 24 hours in a day and 27 hours in a day. And you can see here that the in the in the Vedas that 
the, the Vedas consider that there are 27 hours in a day. It's called the nakshatra or cosmic time. So there's 